So I was finishing up one of my last customers, well not one of, my very last customer's D201 and it hit a nagging problem with the A&L, the uh, noise limiter here. Um, it almost works too well. Instead of cutting down the noise, it cuts down the audio, you know, the more you turn it on. And that had been nagging me for a while, so I dug this one out. This is mine. Since that's the last customers I had, I was going to start working on my stuff anyway. So this was a D201 I had laying around. I had, I got a bunch of them. And I'm like, well, let me just get this uh, D201 going that I had laying around. And then I can compare it, you know, the readings to the um, last of the customers. So I can, you know, see if I can figure out what's happening with this A&L. So... I said it looks pretty decent here you know it's not great not meant but it's pretty good you know for a 50 year old radio you see a scratch here and there that's to be expected but all around pretty good and um, I took the tubes out you know I do that before I you know start changing the caps and everything I get the tubes out the way and I'm pretty happy so far took the cover off in the tubes little dusty you know I see some funky stuff like you know they got two caps in series there you know it's like eh, you know get the right caps um looks like somebody put in this um bigger heavier duty speaker you know i hope it sounds good it looks you know a little more uh, robust than the original speaker in there but all in all it looked pretty good so you know i'm pretty happy and i'm like all right and then um I turned it around, you know, for the underneath, took the bottom cover off, and I'm like, what the heck is that? Doggone golden screwdrivers? I mean, dang, you know, you got, uh, probably had a bad AC hum problem somewhere, and somebody just stuck in these, um, you know, these are old, back when they made capacitors big. You know, uh, what is that UFs on this thing? 47 UFs there. Wow. <laughs> That's going to cause all kind of issues. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but um, these are the two dropping resistors for the receive voltage that go up into the uh, receiver board. Um, you know, the trams run at about 410 volts out of the power supply. And that's too much for the receive um, tubes and stuff. So it uses these two resistors to drop that 410 volts down to 270, if I remember right. And um, they they have a 10 U of capacitor here, um, which I guess was that leg here of this multi cap. So somebody um, um, you know cut that off. And put in this great big 47 UF there. And the other is another 10 UF that goes on the other end of the capacitor here. That kind of helps, you know, stabilize that uh, 270 volts for the receive. But what happens is when you up these capacitors here, the receive stays on a little bit, kind of like a reverse browning ping. Um, well, kind of like a ping, but the receive stays on, you know, because these capacitors here, you know, this little tin, supposed to be a tin up, I broke it off here, and this one, they stay on a little bit, instead of being completely drained when you transmit, you know, they hold a charge and they keep the receive on, so you get a feedback or a squeal, and it's a nasty sounding squeal, too, on a tram, kind of similar to a, um, uh, a browning golden eagle but it's a nasty sounding thing and that's one place you don't want to up the capacitors on a tram is um, right here with the uh, ones that goes to these dropping resistors right here you want to keep them original 10 UFs even if you replace them replace them with the same capacitance and then they wired in all kind of stuff ugly stuff uh, look like they just hit a bunch of 47's and just put them all over the place, you know, cap there on the bottom of the board. I don't know what that big giant cap right there is for, you know, goes to the final. And um, also this blue something wrapped up in blue uh, tape. 
you know uh, what in the world is under that what does that go to looks like a pot a variable this thing got all the variables in it you know they seem to be working and hooked up what in the world are they doing there they got a pot it feels like and they wrapped it up oh my goodness and then if you look close, the boards don't look that good either. You know, they didn't, this thing had a lot of heat, a lot of work, you know, on it. I guess it's repairable, but dang, you know, I wanted something quick and easy so I can get it going, you know, and have a good working one. And then I could compare it to the um, customers. But uh, another project, well, what's these two wires? They go to the final in that big cap. And they go to the squelch. <laughs> Looks like somebody um, took off the wire. That's probably what this was. This was the original squelch pot here. And they took that out and just wrapped it up. And they wired in a new pot. And it was probably something like a dollar watt, because that's the final over there. And they got this big orange cap here. Going to that new pot they put in, they took out the squelch. Ah, nice golden screwdriver job there. Wow. And I think somebody probably paid a lot of money um, to get this thing golden screwdrivered or fixed or whatever they did to it. So, huh. Well, anyway, I'm not too mad, you know. I don't know when I got this or how much I paid for it, but um, stuff like this, just seeing it, you know, nightmares like this, this is why I am getting out the business. I'm only playing with my own. Don't don't feel like playing with other people's nightmares and broke stuff and projects any that more. I'm too old and too slow to do it. I'm, I'm retiring. All right, that's my rant of the day today. Bye.